Monica Vey. I am a sophomore at Michigan. I'm a self-proclaimed mad scientist and inventor of molecules. And I really, really wanted to come out here today and lecture you guys about my scientific research, but I was told that that would be a little bit boring. <laughs> um, so lucky for you guys, I'm actually here to talk about my long-term goals, and more specifically, why I stopped setting them. Okay, I'm sorry, I lied. <laughs> this is a little bit of chemistry. So in chemistry, we have something called a limiting reagent. And in a chemical reaction, the limiting reagent is the substance that is completely consumed by the time the reaction is complete. So basically, it, it just limits the entire reaction, and without it, the reaction cannot continue. So then we're left with something called an excess reagent. But the excess reagent um, is the substance that is left over after the reaction is complete. So let's think of our long-term goals as the limiting reagent. And let's think of our potential as the excess reagent. Why settle for making four hot dogs if you could arguably make an infinite amount of hot dogs. <laughs> and <laughs> just for the record, I don't really like hot dogs, but it was the easiest example that I could find visually. <laughs> Anyways, the issue with setting long-term goals is that it causes us to be practical. Conventional wisdom tells us to set goals that are smart. They're specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, timely, and many highly successful people over the course of their careers have realized that setting SMART goals is really effective for the short term. But they also realized that to have a real impact, they need to chase dreams. And I know that sounds like a cliche, like dream, yeah, we get it, but I've been to a few speeches in the past couple of years, and some of the things that they've said have really inspired me. So there are some caveats to dreaming um, and a few rules that go along with it. For example, you can't just wake up one day and say, okay, my new goal is to become a billionaire. As self-made billionaire uh, John D. Rockefeller said, if your only goal in life is to become a billionaire, then you'll never achieve it. And Jason Silva also has a very dreamworthy approach to life. I was at one of his speeches and he said something that really stuck with me. He said, to be a billionaire is not to make billions of dollars, but to affect the lives of billions of people. And the most important thing to me, something that Michael Dell says, <laughs> because it's happened to me a lot and it kind of justifies my actions, he says that if people are not laughing at your goals, then they're not big enough to ever evolve into a dream. I'm going to say that again, it's just, it's so important to me. If people are not laughing at your goals, they're not big enough to ever evolve into a dream. And if you don't take anything else away from my talk, I want you to remember that. So the last, <laughs> the last rule to dreaming, and I've already said it, avoid setting SMART goals at all costs. Otherwise, you might wake up 10 years from now and you might say, where are the rest of my buns? Or similarly, why did I settle for making four hot dogs when I could have made an infinite amount of hot dogs? Oh, I'll tell you a story about someone who set SMART goals. Me. Sophomore year of high school. I was going to be the first person in my immediate family to attend a four-year university. So I started preparing pretty early. Early sophomore year, I went to my family I think it was over dinner, I, I don't remember, and I said, guys, I have my plan. 
I am going to attend Texas A&M University to study petroleum engineering, and then I'm going to go on and become a drilling engineer at Chevron, and I'm going to climb up the corporate ladder just like Chevron's CEO did. And I, I lived in New Orleans, and so the oil industry is very big there, so that's why that was my specific goal. But here's where I went wrong. I went to my family and I said that, and they didn't laugh. Instead, my mom said, okay, great, let's plan a road trip. Let's, let's go to Texas A&M. <laughs> and that burgundy tank top isn't a coincidence. Um, <laughs> And I loved it. But that's where I went wrong. I, I fell into the trap of security. I loved the idea of knowing where I would be in four years. My goal was, it was sm so smart. <laughs> it was specific, it was measurable. I had even uh, met with an advisor from Texas A&M to figure out how I could get into their honors program by the time I was a sophomore not in high school, in college. I was planning ahead to be a sophomore in college. So that's where I went wrong. Fast forward to the end of sophomore year, and I got an idea. I was watching the news. Um, it wasn't this specific one. I just really like Bill Nye. Um, <laughs> I was watching the news, and the news anchor was discussing the BP oil spill and the aftermaths. Specifically, they were talking about their cleanup efforts. And I don't know why my 16-year-old mind drifted towards the idea that they're not getting everything. I didn't even know what I meant by that. I didn't know where, where my thought process was taking me. I didn't know what everything was. But this is the image that popped into my head. So we've got UV rays coming out of the sun coming from the sun, and they're hitting this layer of oil, and that oil's on top of the seawater. And I remembered learning something, it's a very basic chemistry concept called a photoproduct, a product of something reacting with light. Something has to be forming, and it's going into the ocean, but what is it? So I thought, okay, well, obviously, like, my 16-year-old brain, like, can't really conceptualize this, but I'm sure someone's got it handled, right? So I Googled it. I typed in BP oil spill photochemicals toxic. And first of all, that didn't even pick up on photochemicals. It said, did you mean phytochemicals? No, that's something completely different. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And then, if you notice here, <laughs> the word missing in all of the results, the word photochemicals. I thought, okay, this is not a new word. I mean, they taught us about photochemicals in, like, middle school science, so why isn't it popping up? There's obviously a reaction happening between the sun and the oil. What's going on? So I said, all right, maybe I'm just missing something. Maybe I'm really not in the twilight zone. I'm just going to verify. So I cold emailed about 30 professors, and my emails went something like, Hi, I'm Kiana Kave. I'm 16, I'm a sophomore in high school. Um, I was wondering, do you guys know anything about the photochemicals that happened after the oil spill? <laughs> 28 of them responded a little something like this. I wasn't laughing, I was pretty sad. <laughs> but two of them, two out of the 30, they took me under their wing. And I actually ended up working under one of them for so long that not only did I become acquainted with lab technique, how to explore a hypothesis if I have one, I ended up publishing my first paper. This was a, about one and a half years after this, this cold email incident. And this was the title of my paper, A Method for Identifying 
the photo products, the rest doesn't matter. <laughs> Keyword, photo products. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is what I found in the research. The picture that popped into my head that one day that I was watching the news, I filled in the blanks, and that's what I found in the paper. People laughed, but that was the first time that I realized that maybe it's a good thing to have people laughing, because if your idea is so crazy and so far out of this world, maybe, maybe it'll revolutionize an industry. Maybe it'll change the way that people conduct research in a specific field. Maybe you could introduce a new vocabulary word, <laughs> photo products, to the world of oil spills. And my mind really opened up after that. I started coming home and saying things like, hey mom, today I'm going to learn how to fly a plane. <laughs> she almost had a heart attack that day. <laughs> or, hey mom, today I think I'm going to cross a log with alligators beneath me in the middle of the Panamanian rainforest. Yay! And every time I would, I would tell my mom things like this, I got a reaction, something like this. I'm sorry for using this photo, mom. <laughs> I have to see her after this, so. <laughs> and then the calls started to get a little bit more intense. Hey, mom. NASA just named a planet after me to honor me for my research findings. Or... <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Mom, I made it in Forbes. All of this crazy stuff. And one day, I called my mom, and, and I was really serious. It wasn't like a, I was trying to make her laugh kind of thing, because after a while, I really did. I thought, OK, well, whatever tr well, it makes my mom laugh, it must be a good idea. But this was, I called her, and I was so serious. And I said, Mom, I'm going to invent or develop this molecule. And it targets these toxins, these photochemicals that I found in my research, those toxins that cause cancer, I'm going to take them and invent a molecule that turns them into water. And it's going to affect the lives of millions, if not billions of people. Mom. And then one day, I called my mom and I said, Hey, Ma, I did it. <laughs> and all of this, it just makes me reflect on the time when I wanted to just go to college. I just wanted to graduate. I just wanted to go work for Chevron. And now I'm working with Chevron. And it just reminds me that had I stayed so closed-minded about that one goal, to attend that one university and go do that one job for the rest of my life, had I stayed closed-minded and not said yes to the research opportunities or said yes to anything else because it didn't align with my goal, then I would be there. Yeah, I would probably graduate from Texas A&M and do, do the thing I had planned to, but I'm a lot happier where I am now. <laughs> so, I have one advice, or one piece of advice for you guys, and that is to eliminate yourselves from a reaction containing a limiting reagent. Well, technically all reactions do, but make an infinite amount of hot dogs. Don't settle for four. Thank you. <laughs>